Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today I want to take a moment just to really quickly talk about gripping your bow and how much bow torque can impact your shot and how inconsistent your shot could be. If you have wild groups or you can't get something to tune right, my guess is that you have a lot of bow torque and you're not doing consistent grip and consistent pressure onto your bow. So I'm out here playing with the Ranch Ferry Test Kit from Sirius and Ethics and I decided to just have a little experiment while I'm bear shaft tuning at a target down here about 15 yards. I got perfect flying darts out of these 250 Apollos with a 100 grain insert and a 200 grain point up front. Yeah, this is a big boy arrow. But I started doing something with a little bit of torquing and it blew my mind how drastic the results were out of such heavy arrows in particular, which are usually tracking a little bit easier than the lighter, faster ones. So what I want to do here is I want to shoot first the arrow with no torquing pressure, just my perfect, normal, consistent pressure, and show you how they flew like darts, if you will, down range. Then I want to pull them from the target and I want to add pressure either on the outside, the left side of the grip as a right-handed archer, or on the inside, the right side of the grip as a right-handed archer and talk about how much torque and actually forget talking about it you'll be able to see the results downrange. So before I take these first two shots let's talk about how I grip my bow. Everybody likes to grip a bow a little bit different. Some people like what's known as a high wrist grip where your wrist is up higher. That's very common with certain types of trad bows where the grip is actually so bellied out that you have to have a high wrist grip. Some people like a mid wrist grip where your wrist kind of sits in line with the center of the grip. I personally like a low wrist grip. My wrist is very low down on the riser when I'm actually shooting. It puts my elbow more down here than it does up here. And everybody's different and there's no wrong way out of those three methods to grip a bow. Some people like Jesse Broadwater almost has his finger clear over the shelf of the riser. Paige Pierce looks almost the same way. I like to have my uh, just the very bottom edge of the fleshy part of my palm coming in contact with the outside edge of the riser here and then my knuckles will sit as you can see at an angle to the shelf of the bow and that allows to have consistent pressure. You'll notice that I can open and close my hand and the bow does not want to go one way or the other. If I had my whole hand in there, if I open my hand, you'll notice the bow wants to move on me and that means I have to fight it. I have to torque it. I don't want that. I want my hand to sit there completely open. I can extend my fingers. I can roll them in and out. The bow does not want to tip and that is a torqueless grip. That is meaning that you're grip has no impart on the bow in terms of how it's sitting vertically or left and right. The bow's weight is doing the vast majority of the work and you're just holding even pressure across the back of the grip. So let's do a few shots here and let's see if I can get those nice flying darts and then I'm going to impart that torque on the grip and we'll see how ugly those knocks can be. All right, looks like we got two really good looking shots down there. Let's take the camera down and see what we have. All right, so as you can see, in terms of our left right, we're still working on some knock height issues, but in terms of our left right, we're looking really, really good. But I wanna add that torque, that inside or outside torque and see how bad it is. Even though these arrows right now are tracking really well left and right, the up down we'll have to work on later. But I wanna show you how little torque can be added to the bow to drastically change the point of impact. All right, same bow, same arrow, same target, same distance, but now we're gonna add torque to the bow. We're gonna add uneven pressure across the back side of the grip. This time we're gonna add a lot of thumb pressure and we're gonna torque the bow to the left and that's gonna cause my sight to kind of drift a little bit to the left and we're gonna see that it's gonna cause a pretty ugly direction in terms of how the arrow impacts the target. Now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna add knuckle side pressure, or I like to call ring pressure, and that's gonna be on this side of the bow, causing the bow to be torqued to the right, my sight to track a little bit to the right, and we're gonna see what kind of impact it has on the target. I will say, as someone who's been shooting with even pressure for such a long time, that is such a difficult thing to do, but it's totally understandable, and particularly if you're new to the sport and you're not used to gripping a bow. You're used to holding things, right? That's what we're all designed to do, to hold things. We're not really designed to let our hand relax and hold this multiple pound object in our hands. We're used to gripping things and holding things, but that induces torque either one way or the other. Usually it's gonna induce it on the knuckle side, right? Because when you go to grip, right? See how it torques? 
you go to grip and it's going to induce it this way. And you'll see how bad of a tear you'll get down here, or at least bad of a knock direction. We're not shooting through paper. Sorry, I keep saying tear. If you were to shoot through paper, you would see that the knock would track through paper and have a long tear in the paper if you want to do that type of paper tuning. And if you do want to do paper tuning, I'll leave a link in the description below and you can follow that video on how I like to paper tune my bear shafts. So now this begs the question, what on earth is this? Are you kidding me? Look at, look at the knock tear. This is atrocious. This bottom one here, remember this is the same arrow, same shot, same bow, same everything, except for the torque of the riser. This bottom one here, we added a lot of thumb pressure. The top one here, we added a lot of knuckle, or I like to call it ring finger pressure. Look at how drastic, severely to the left, severely to the right, the knocks are pointing completely different than the face of the impact of the arrow. And this is where I want to wager 90% of people's tuning issues happen, or either face pressure or knuckle hand pressure on the riser itself. This is where the tuning errors lie. And in particular in bear shaft tuning, just like this, it's going to show up and it's gonna be ugly. And no amount of rest movement, no amount of adding or subtracting point weight can cure this. It's super critical that you focus on your grip, make sure it's an even grip pressure because tuning becomes significantly and infinitely easier when you get that hammered down first. It never ceases to amaze me in archery how a little single tweak could make such a huge impact on your scores, on your shooting form, on how comfortable you are when you shoot, or in this case, how a bear shaft flies down range. Imagine trying to tear that, uh, get that tune out by moving your rest and adjusting your spine, when in reality, your spine is fine, your point weight's fine, your rest is fine, it's just how you're gripping the bow. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to all the things that you're doing with your bow. Try to keep it as consistent as possible. It'll make the sport of archery so much more enjoyable and so much more fun. So that is all for this video. If you have any questions on arrow tuning or bow grip or other sorts of things that involve archery, follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram. My email's even down there if you want that more personal touch. And of course, you could always leave a comment here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting, if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.